Java beans require a bit of prep work, but their rich flavor and buttery texture makes it totally worth the effort. Here's what you need to know. Now, fava beans, as you find them in your farmer's market or at, in your CSA box, will look like this. So they're in a big pod. Um, sometimes the pod is deceiving because big pod doesn't always hold lots and lots of beans. But the beans are pretty big. They're about the size of lima beans. And they, they're kind of cozied up in the pod. It's lined, it's like lined with um, packaging material almost <laughs> to keep them safe and intact. Sometimes you'll find one of these big pods that doesn't have any beans in it at all. Very deceptive. So you can use a knife to crack them open. I find I could just sort of wiggle them to get them started and peel along the spine to empty out the beans. But once you get the beans out of the pods, you'll notice that they're covered with kind of a thin, transparent, almost waxy sheath. This sheath is edible, um, but especially when you have very young beans, it can be a little tough, it can be sometimes a little bit bitter. You can make the texture more tender by cooking the, the beans in a solution with baking soda, but most recipes you find will ask you to remove the sheaths before serving them. So the way to do that is by blanching and shocking. So I have a pot of boiling water and I have a bowl of ice water and I need both of these things ready to go to blanch and shock. So I'll put my beans into the boiling water and I'm just gonna let these cook for about a minute. That's all it's going to take to help the sheath kind of release from the beans inside and make it really easy to pop them out. So make sure that you have your big bowl of ice water ready to go. It's been a minute, the beans should be ready to go. I'm just going to turn off the heat and quickly drain these in a colander. I've drained the beans, now I'll transfer them to my ice bath. Now the ice bath is going to stop the cooking. Usually it sets the color and it will cool the beans down so they're easier to work with. I have a triple layer of paper towels on my cutting board. Now that I've let the beans cool for a minute, I'll transfer them with a slatted spoon to the paper towels to let them dry. I'll pat the beans dry. A wet bean is a slippery bean and we're gonna be using a paring knife to remove that sheath and we don't want the bean slipping around. Okay, almost done. So super easy, blanch, shock, dry, and now we'll remove the sheets. So you can use a paring knife or you can use your fingernail if you have a good sharp fingernail, but we'll just take the knife along the edge of the bean and cut a little slit. And then you should be able to just press the bean out with your fingers, pretty easy. And it's kind of fun too. So again, we're just cutting a very, very shallow cut just to open it up. And then use your fingers to just push the bean out. They do have a little bit of a dimple on one side that I think kind of gives you a good um, a little direction as to where you can make the slit. And it's, if it's easier to put this down on the cutting board before you press them, sometimes they'll split, but these are big beans. So you won't lose any of their uh, presence. They're beautiful, so bright green. The texture is really buttery. That's it. Now these beans are ready to be cooked further if you like or used as is in salads. Uh, I love to take them and mash them up with a little lemon juice and some salt and pepper and olive oil, put them on some crusty bread, but really the possibilities are limitless. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.